All right, gang, let's get this party started. So what we're going to talk about today is analyzing systems, all right, but, but real physical systems. So remember, remember the, the pictorial ver, you know, view of a system. You've got this block that has an input and an output. So to analyze that system, the block, we need to be able to create an input and also to record an, the output. All right. So we're going to use the function generator to create the signal and the oscilloscope to read the signals. That said, I'm going to separate them into two videos. So this video is about the function generator. So let's start. Here's the function generator. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is initialization. So even before you start to create anything and output any signal, you want to initialize. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, you turn it on. So the one thing, unlike the oscilloscope, the function generator does not have a button that says default setup or reset to factory settings. You don't know what's going on. So you need to be able to know what the settings are. It turns out these ones specifically, some of them are set to reset every time you turn it on and off, and some of them don't reset. So you really just know, need to know how to initialize so that you don't make the mistake of thinking it was or it wasn't. All right, so let's go through that process. So first of all, you're going to hit channel button. So this channel button is just above this B and C with a yellow a ring around it. That is actually the BNC where the signal comes out. So remember that for later. So when I hit channel, you'll see that I've got here in the horizontal uh, bar here, you have a bunch of buttons. And uh, one of them is output off and on. It's currently on, set to off. Now the great thing about that is after you make all these setting changes and re you know set it to whatever waveform you want, there might be situations where you want to stop the signal and do something with the system. Well, you could do that by turning it off, but then you'd have to turn it back on and reset everything. So it's easier if you can just turn off the signal, and that's how you do that. Now, if I push it, you'll notice that now, if you go back to the channel button, it's lit up. All right, so that's a nice way to double check. For example, if you're plugging in your function generator and you're like, what's going on? Nothing's happening. It's possible that you haven't set output on. So check that. Okay, I'm gonna turn that back off for now. Now, the other really important uh, function is the output load. Let's look at that. So output load, I've got two options. I've got 50 ohm option, which is usually the, the reset, uh, the factory reset. So that's not the one we want. We want high Z, where Z stands for high impedance, okay? So let me, talk a little bit about the 50 ohm and the high Z on the whiteboard. Come on, follow me. So here's a pictorial or a schematic view of the function generator connected to the oscilloscope. So the function generator is always looks like this. All right, this is an equivalent circuit. It's got a 50 ohm equivalent imp impedance. When you change that setting, that doesn't mean you've changed this value. This value doesn't change. What you're telling the function generator really is what your oscilloscope is set to. So when you say high Z, you're saying the oscilloscope is once is set to one mega ohm. If you're saying 50 ohms, you're saying the oscilloscope is set at 50 ohms. All right, let's talk about how that changes things. Well, hopefully you can see here that this is a voltage divider. And if you're set to one mega ohm, then basically you have a one-to-one. -one. Your voltage out is basically equal to voltage in because it's one mega ohm over 50 ohms plus one mega ohm, which is about approximately one. But if, so therefore, one volt equals one volt to the oscilloscope. The problem is if you set it to 50 ohms, so you're using a 50 ohm oscilloscope, then you've got a one-half voltage divider. So when you set one volt here, it's reading a half a volt. So what the function generator will do is actually double the voltage to compensate for that one half voltage divider. So if you ever see a 2x 
uh, problem in terms of, oh, this, this amplitude is two times what it should be, it's most likely because you could, forgot to set 50, 50, your function generator to high Z and it's still set to 50 ohms and doubling the voltage. So that's it for initialization and setup. Now we've got to create the waveform and then output it to the via the yellow BNC to the uh, system under test. All right. Now, let me talk just a second about that. How do you get, before I even make the signal, how do you get the signal to your system? Well, we're going to use a BNC. So you'll take a BNC and you'll somehow connect it to your system. In many cases, maybe your system is on a breadboard. So you might use something like this. You'll connect it to the BNC and then plug it in if you've got the right posts uh, into your breadboard. Now, uh, make note that this little nub right here, it stands for ground. So I want to connect that into the black post. And then the other side is your function. Then I'll connect wires to my breadboard and move on from there. All right. But for this uh, video, I'm just going to connect this once we create a function or waveform directly into the oscilloscope to view it. Okay. So let's talk about creating a waveform. The first thing we want to do is we're going to look at these vertical column of buttons. I'm just going to go from top to bottom. So the very first one is waveform. Choose a waveform. Well, look at all these options I have. I have sine, square, ramp, pulse, arbitrary waveform, and I can even go more. And I've got triangle, random noise, pseudo-random binary sequence, PRBS, and even a constant voltage, which is DC. So I have to decide what signal is the right signal for my experiment. Um, a lot of times you might want to do a step response, which means a constant voltage in. Well, the problem with that, of course, happens when you, if you use DC for that constant voltage, which makes total sense, if you want to reset the experiment, you've got to turn it off, you've got to do output off, let the system settle back down, then do output on, and it gets sort of tedious. So what I'd rather do is automate that on-off process. So I'm going to go back and actually, in some cases, use the square wave with a long enough period so that my system can get to steady state uh, as a sort of repeating uh, step response. All right. But you decide depending on your system. Okay. So now that I've chosen square wave, it jumps right to the second option, which is parameters. So for example, you can go between them, but you... If you want to change the parameters of that square wave or that sine wave, whatever it is, you got to go to parameters here on the uh, vertical column of buttons. But that gives me options here on the horizontal columns now. Now, what can I change? Well, I can change frequency of the square wave. I can change the amplitude of the square wave. I can also change the offset, meaning that most of these signals will be a plus minus signal uh, having a DC offset of zero. So if I want to raise it, I need to set up the offset to do that. And then uh, there's also phase, and then there's duty cycle. All right, it's uh, square wave is set to 50% by default. Now, what I want to do is, is I want a one volt, uh, let's do a one volt square wave from zero to one volt, and um, 10 hertz, and let's do it for fun, let's do a duty cycle of 25% instead of 50%. So on a quarter of the time and off three quarters of the time, but still at a 10 hertz uh, frequency. All right, so let's go through that process. So I'm going to start with frequency. Its default is one kilohertz. So I'm going to go down to 10 hertz. So I'm going to use my, I can use these arrows to move to different units. And I'm going to scroll down to 100, move over, oops, 100, move over, and then scroll down to 10. Now that's one option. I like that option because I like playing with the dots. That said, there's a much quicker option, which is you just do one zero hertz, bam, does it for you. All right. Now, uh, there's 10 hertz. Now let's go to amplitude. Now, before I get to amplitude, I do want to check that I chose high Z. Okay, good. Now I'm back to parameters. Amplitude. I want a one volt peak to peak. So I'm just going to do it the quick way, one VPP. Okay. Then I'm going to go to offset. Well, this gives me 1 volt peak to peak means minus 0.5 volts to plus 0.5 volts. But I want to go 0 to 1. So I need to raise up my offset by a half a volt. So, or 500 millivolts. 
So I'm gonna scroll up to 500 millivolts on the offset, and now it should be going zero to one volt. Now phase, I'm gonna leave the same. Let's go to duty cycle. Let's scroll down from 50% to, from 50% to, well, let's just type it in, 25%. All right, double check, looks good. So quarter of the time high, quarter of the time low. Um, that's it. I think we're ready to output it and verify that uh, we were able to create this function. So I'm gonna to go to channel, I'm gonna to go to output, but actually let me plug it into the oscilloscope. Okay, and now it's on, and I'm gonna hit channel output on, and there it is. All right, so let's stop it, take a peek. So obviously a quarter of the time high and three quarter, quarters of the time low, and you can double check uh, the voltages on your own. All right, so I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next time.